So radiation safety is a big deal on part three and the infrastructure of radiation protection and safety within the clinic is definitely something the examiners are interested in and something they can ask about. So let's discuss what are some of the requirements that NRC asks the clinics to abide by, who is part of the radiation safety committee, also just labeled RSC, and what must be in a written directive. So some of the requirements by the NRC. First thing, you of course need a radiation license. So individuals need to be on that license. It needs to say whether you have HDR, just Linux, who is able to operate those, have all names, and there's a lot of formality you need to follow for the license, but that is something that 100% must be done. There also must be a ALARA program. So you need a way to ensure that improvements are being made, or at least people are reviewing documents to ensure that people are abiding by the radiation rules and no one is getting excess radiation. You need, as part of that, a radiation safety committee. You also need a radiation safety officer. You need to have written procedures. You also need written directives, which we'll talk about here shortly. You need a notice of medical events. The license, the, each licensee must have a calibration and survey equipment. You need to take necessary precautions with sealed sources, and you have to have adequate teletherapy QA and upkeep. So now who is part of the Radiation Safety Committee? And I guess harping back to the last question, those are things at NRC you have to have as a clinic. So it's very important that you know what they, what you have to have minimal to run as a clinic. And it's something that if asked, the examiners very much will expect you to know those things. Because if one day you run your own clinic, you have to know what the bare minimum is that you need to ensure radiation safety. So radiation safety committee, you have a RSO, you have authorized users, and typically there's one, at least one person from each one of these groups in the committee during the meetings. So it's not that all authorized users have to be in there, but you need to have a representative that is an authorized user part of that committee. You also want a nurse. They often are very integral in brachytherapy. You need someone from management. Typically that is the that's the manager of the department. And all of this is also highlighted in 10 CFR 35. And I know I've already mentioned this, but you need to read that, follow it and understand what that CFR says and what it means. And then finally, a written directive. So this needs to have date. It needs to have signatures of specifically the position that they approve that prescription for that patient. And it needs to be done before treatment, not during treatment, not after treatment, before, especially for brachytherapy. You have authorized users. Uh, both the physicist needs to review that, the physician needs to sign it, as I mentioned. It needs to have the patient name. So it can't just be a generic template. It needs to have the patient name. It needs to have the nuclide. It needs to have the specific dose. It needs to have the date of both when it was signed and the date of the actual treatment. And then any type of revision it needs to have. So if a plan was changed, if a prescription was changed, anything altered from day one, fraction one, there needs to be written documentation of it. So quick question about the NRC, but it's something that's very important. Review 10 CFR 35, know who is part of your radiation safety committee and what goes into what the NRC expects of you as a brachytherapy clinic. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment below. Best of luck.